This is all about octave patterns and being able to find them in one position. Hey guys, it's Ricky with a quick little lesson for you. Now the beautiful thing is that the minor pentatonic scale actually gives us a lot of the answers that we're looking for to create this pattern. I'm going to use the E string as my starting point. So what I can do is I can go from ceiling to floor how the strings are laid out. So this is the ceiling, this would be the floor. And I'd use the octave pattern, the E shaped octave pattern because it's starting on the E string. I go up two frets over two strings, that gives me that octave pattern. Coming down another string, we get exactly the same pattern. So look, up two frets over two strings. That would be our A shaped octave. If we jump down another string again, what we have to do is we have to add another fret in to compensate for that kink in the tuning between the G and the B string. So that means instead of playing it up two and over two, what we do is we go up three and over two. So we're always jumping over a string there. So that gives us our D shaped octave because it's starting on the D string. And if we jump down again onto the G string, because we've got that compensation, we still have to add that fret and it's exactly the same shape as the D shape. You can see that's what we get there. And because it's on the G string, it's a G shaped octave. So just to recap, we get the E shaped octave, we get the A shaped octave, we get the D shaped octave, and we get the G shaped octave. Now that's really cool because what we're doing here is we're starting on the first finger. But this is what I think of as being a lower to upper way of finding this note. This finger is lower on the fretboard than this finger. So this is lower, or this is upper. So lower, higher. But what if we wanted it going backwards? Well, we can use the cage shapes again. The next way we want to look at these octaves in position is we're going to look at this E string again. Because remember, we're going from ceiling to floor. So we'd need to go from here. I'm in the A minor pentatonic pattern. <laughs> And I'm using that flat third as my starting point because it's on the E string I need to jump backwards now what happens here is this is the starting note and I go one two three frets and I go over three strings so you can see it goes one two three one two three so now that is a G shape and it's a counterpart to the one that we played previously because if you think about it any note that's on this thin E string is the same on this thick E string it's just the octave that it's in is different so we've got that note there right let's jump down because remember we're going from ceiling to floor the next string is going to be the A string so if we have a note here then to go backwards what we do is we find the C shaped octave and you can see that that goes back two frets and down three strings. So go. And if you think about it, it's a C shaped octave because there's the C shape. It's easy for you to see it if you can play that C shape there. So there's the C shaped octave. The next one we're going to do is we're going to go down a string again and we're going to go to this D string. Now this one, this belongs to the E shape. Because if you remember this E shaped octave, this is counterpart to this one as well. And what we basically do is we follow up and we copy those over. And this is very much the same shape as the C shape. So this here and this here are the same octave shape. So that gives you a total of seven octave patterns that you can play in one position and you can transfer notes. This is great for adding notes to chords and you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, you know, how do I add a seven, extra seventh? Well, you know that underneath my bar chord here, the, the first finger is hiding this flat seven away. So if I wanted to make that flat seven stick out in the chord, then I double it by adding it as an octave there. I'm just using the D shaped octave to help me to do that. That's a really useful way to help you to find these extra notes for you to use these as reference points to be able to build your chords, your scales and your arpeggios. If you want the PDF to this one, I'm going to ask you something different. Go over to my Facebook group, join it and it will be there in the file section and I'll see you in a future video. Take care.